I'm Jeff Syedek, the designer of Battle Stations. Battle Stations is a board game with strict mission objectives and a turn structure. It's also a role-playing game where your continuing characters grow in power and have it, an effect on the ongoing campaign. It's a game for two to five players. Some of the players work together as the crew on board the starship, cooperatively trying to solve the mission. And one player is the enemy who controls the mission or the enemy ship or whatever else is going on. When you play the advanced game, you can add more players. I've played at conventions with up to 25 players. Each of the players select one of the pre-generated characters. Later on, you'll learn how to build your own characters and advance them. But for right now, creating a character is simply picking up a character sheet and picking up the miniature that goes with it. This is the uh, cheat sheet, which tells you basically the things you can do. Combat is red, engineering is blue, Piloting is yellow, science is green. Your skill levels determine how well you do the given thing. All the skill checks in the game are two dice, and then add your skill. Everybody can do everything in the game, but if you do the thing that you're a professional in, you get a reroll of your dice. So this guy is gonna be playing a pilot, and a pilot it has a yellow base, and he's really good at the yellow module, which is the helm. There's a ship control card here, that shows how fast your ship is going and how much power you have in your helm, your guns, and your shields. Every time you launch a missile or fire the cannons, you use your guns power. Every time your ship gets shot by a cannon, you use shields power. And of course, every time you maneuver, you're gonna be spending helm power. If you're out of power, you need somebody to get back to that engine and make an engineering check to pump up the engine and get more power. If you're watching this video, you are probably gonna be the player playing the enemy. If you're the one who usually is the DM for your group, or the one who breaks out the new rule book and reads it, and then this is really for you. You're gonna be operating the enemy ship, uh, in the basic scenarios at least, the enemy ship, and the players are each gonna have characters to operate their own ship. Each scenario in the basic game book introduces more possibilities so that you can have more things you can do. By the time you're through that whole book, you'll have characters that are peeking and popping and Overwatch and all this amazing, interesting mechanical stuff that you can do, and it'll be simple and fun. All right, this is the first mission of the campaign, and it's super simple to set up. You've got a size three human ship here, and this is the hero's ship. This is what they arrived at the starbase on. And then this is, this is the starbase, and here's all the hero characters. So, as the enemy, you're gonna be controlling all of the enemy characters and all the enemy bots. I've also set up here the starbase and the hero ship docked to it. So you're gonna be telling the players exactly what's happening at the start of the scenario, which is where they've arrived at the starbase for a mandatory inspection, and now they're off the ship while their ship's getting inspected and pawed over by a bunch of government stooges. And that's when they announced, by the way, we're nationalizing this ship for our war effort and you should turn in your personal weapons and retire. That's when the heroes have their call to action. They're gonna join the rebellion now and they're gonna say, no, that's our ship and get back on and fight for it. So here's the rules about how that works, the nuts and bolts of it, the mechanics. There's a sequence of play and the first thing that happens every phase is ship movement. Our ship is going speed zero, so it's not going anywhere. There's no control card for the starbase. Starbases don't move, so we don't even bother with that. So first is ship movement, done. There's no missiles to move, so we're done with that. And now it comes for hero action. So now you tell them that they get to do whatever they want in whatever order they want. There is a cheat sheet here, which tells you a list of actions they're likely to want to do. Now, because their mission objective is to get on board their starship and fly it 12 hexes away from the starbase, they're probably going to want to go in and shoot the pilot and take over the helm and fly off and, and deal with the other guys as well. These are your enemy bots and they're going to be moving through the ship and trying to get there and stop the heroes from getting away. And also, these are your characters here. Now, unlike the player's characters who all have these cool special abilities, you're just going to have your species ability, which is still nice, but you won't have special abilities such as uh, being brutal or being a uh, swashbuckler. You have four enemy characters to deal with and four bots to deal with. That's a lot on your plate, so you don't want to have to track a lot of special abilities and stuff. You are playing to win. You are playing to stop them because the worst thing that can happen to the heroes is that 
you have killed them all and they start new characters. So don't, don't put on the kid gloves. By the time you get into the second or third scenario, then it becomes a lot more balanced and there's a decent chance that you're gonna kill off one or two of the characters or maybe even wipe them all out. That's okay because they've got clones and they'll come back. Here's the nuts and bolts of it. The hero characters are gonna get to move and act first. So they're likely to come in and shoot this pilot They'll also probably want to get back to the engines to uh, pump some more power so they can accelerate and get out of there. You'll tell your players that they'll each get to move and act or act and move. And you can even, as your action, move twice. So if you want to move double, you can, but that you won't get to do anything else. And the actions you can take are personal actions, such as healing somebody, but nobody's damaged yet, with a med kit, uh, or firing a personal weapon at somebody, which is going to use your combat skill. The battle stations are the squares with the stars on the tiles. So this pilot might go over here and take the action to accelerate the ship. Now as soon as he accelerates the ship, the dock is broken and you fly away from the starbase. So don't let him fly away until everybody gets on board. If you want to activate the module, you have to move to the battle station and then make a skill check based on that professional skill in order to turn the ship in the helm or to fire the cannon in the cannon module. When you're moving, you can only move through modules by via the doorways in each of the four sides. All the other players that aren't the enemy are going to have a character sheet with his species and profession and the alien ability is supposed, associated with that species. And they're also going to have a special ability to start with. And skill levels. So you can see this guy, uh, Berbert, has three combat, three science, one athletics, and zero in engineering or piloting. So if this guy needs to repair something, he's pretty much out of luck because he's gonna add zero to his dice roll. But at combat and science, he's pretty good. So uh, he also has two pieces of starting equipment he starts with. And then over here, we can see the luck he starts with. Uh, everybody starts with six luck. And uh, how many squares he can move, you can't move diagonally. The number of hands he has, which are also marked here, so that you can put your equipment in hands. You need to have a free hand to operate battle stations, which uh, in the first scenario, we don't go into that yet because I just want people to be able to use the equipment they have and not worry about it. And uh, they also have a target number. So uh, the Zawalans are slightly smaller than humans, so it's harder to hit them. You need a nine combat check to hit them. So if for some reason, this guy was trying to shoot another Zawalan, he would need to roll a six on the dice because the target number is nine and he adds three for his combat skill. I'm gonna run through a sample turn here, uh, which might be a good idea for you to do before you get your players there because then you'll know what to expect a little bit. In this scenario, I, I've set up the starship and the star base right here at the edge of the map. If they get to the edge of the map, then they have finished the mission, they're good. So the first thing we do is ship movement. There's no ship movement because it's at speed zero. And then we do hero actions. And so that's gonna be when the players do their thing. So I'm gonna be moving for the players and seeing what they're gonna do. Well, the first thing they're gonna do is want to come in and take over control of the helm. And the Marine is the best one at that. Because her profession is Marine, she gets a reroll of one of the dice in skill checks that relate to combat, because that's the profession for Marines. This guy is a, is a pilot, so he'll get a reroll in piloting skill checks and this guy will get a reroll in science, and this guy will get a reroll in engineering. You can tell that because we clicked a base on here. They're color-coded to pop in and be the right color for your profession. So the Marine is gonna consult her move value, which is five. One, two, three, four, five. And then she's gonna make a combat skill check to try to shoot that pilot. So combat skill check is rolling two dice. Her combat skill of two adds to that four, makes it a six. It's not enough to get the target number of that and hit it but she is a professional Marine, so she can re-roll a die. And she's a human professional Marine, so she can re-roll both dice. And that ends up snake eyes. That, let me tell you friends, is not a good roll. So she has missed, and because she's a human, she got to re-roll not only once, but she got a second re-roll of the other die and ended up miserably missing. Everybody begins the mission with six luck that they can spend on re-rolling stuff like their skill checks or damage they would take or checks to see if their ship blows up. So right now, she could spend some luck to re-roll these dice, but we don't want to waste the luck because it's still pretty early in the mission and there's plenty of other people to come in and take a shot. 
So now we're gonna have this guy come in and go one, two, three, four, five, and he's gonna take a shot. His combat skill is one, so he's gonna need a seven on the dice. And he does poorly as well. He's still not gonna spend any luck. And now some of the players might argue about whether it's good to spend luck now or not. One, two, three, uh, four, because he wants to be next to his friend, because he can heal him later, maybe. And now he's gonna take a shot. That's a seven, and his combat skill is three, so that's a 10, so we have hit. And now we're gonna roll damage, and the damage for his blast pistol is 2d6 minus one. Each of my enemies has seven hit points, and so 2d6 minus one is nine, so that's gonna knock that one out. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it, and I'm gonna leave a jetpack there on the table to show that there's a jetpack. There's also a blast pistol, but they all have blast pistols, so they don't care. Enemy pilots start with jetpacks, and so he, this character has a blast pistol and a jetpack. When he dies, there's a jetpack and a blast pistol there that you could spend an action picking up, but that's an action that you're not spending shooting somebody or flying the ship or something like that. Last thing I have is the pilot, and he's gonna go one, two, three. Uh, his movement is four, so he's gonna make a double move. One, two, three. So he did a double move to get there, and now he's standing in that spot with the dead body. And he might want to pick up that jetpack later. Okay, that's hero actions. Now it's time for the enemy to do his thing. This is where you get to bring some hurt. So these guys are all going to move. They are humans. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They'll double move. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And these bots are going to be bringing up some hurt. We are trying to stop them from, from getting control of the ship and taking off. So these guys are moving up so that they can fire the weapons from the starbase. And the characters on board the ship, our enemy characters, are going in there to try to shoot them and stop them. So now it's going to be the hero's actions uh, on the next phase. So here's the control card, which at all the power levels start at 1, and the speed starts at 0 in this mission because you're docked with a star base. Usually your speed starts at one. This is the out of control track and we're ignoring that until about the second or third mission. So the next phase happens, the ship's still going speed zero, so it still moves nowhere. So this pilot is going to try to accelerate the ship. He's going to go, the difficulty for a maneuver is double your speed, which is zero, plus double your size. Your ship's size is one third of the module, so it's got nine modules, so it's size three, so you need a piloting check of a six in order to accelerate the ship. He did that easily, so now the ship's going speed one. It doesn't move yet, it doesn't move until the next phase, until time for ship movement again. But it is going fast enough that this ship is no longer docked. It's still in that same hex, but it's sort of moved, you know, a couple hundred meters away from the old ship. So that's his action, and he's deciding not to move at all because uh, he wants to stay in the helm and fly the ship. She feels bad about not being able to shoot anybody the first time around, but one, two, three, four, five wouldn't get her far enough to shoot anybody. So what she's gonna do is take her action to pick up the jetpack, and now she is armed with a jetpack. Now the jetpack doesn't require a hand, so we'll just put it on the character sheet. And the number of items you can have is your athletics plus one, so she's got her armor, her blast rifle, and her jetpack. So she has all the items she can carry comfortably right now. And she also gets to move, but I don't know if she really wants to move, even though she just put out the jetpack. Because if she moves, she might put herself in harm's way. That's one of a very beginner mistake is to just charge out there and get shot. So she's gonna move just over here so she's out of line of sight. And he's acted and she's acted. By the way, when he acted to accelerate the ship, it spent our helm power, which means we need some more power, and this guy's going to run back to get us some more power. So this is uh, the first scenario, and you're really going to be teaching the players how to play as well as playing against them. So when they spend their helm power to accelerate the ship, you're going to tell them that they really should get an engineer back there to pump for some more power so they can accelerate some more. So this guy's going to move one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So he moved twice because he moved and he moved as his action, and because he's a Kenoshan, there's just great big tumbleweed things, he gets to move again as a free move. One, two, three, four, five. So he's almost all the way back to that battle station to pump the engine. This guy hasn't acted yet, so he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and now he has line of sight on these two guys. He's going to shoot the, the close one. He's going to roll two dice and add his combat skill, hoping to get at least an eight because that's the target number for humans. And I got an eight. Actually, it's a lot more than an eight because he adds his combat skill. So it easily hits. So now I'm going to roll for damage when damage for his blast pistol is 2d6 minus one. So that's going to do six points of damage, which, because remember these guys have seven, six points of damage for this guy. Doesn't quite knock him out. And now it's the enemy's turn. The ships have disconnected, so they're not going to be able to come up and shoot the heroes, but they will be able to come up and launch weapons and fire cannons at the heroes. So they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, you know what? This guy probably doesn't want to be there because that's a red battle station and the Marine's going to be the one who wants to shoot it. That's a combat bot. So he'll get a reroll and plus three on his chance to use the cannon. Uh, these guys are both kind of hopeless over here on, on the missile bay, but they'll, they'll hope to do it. Uh, however, according to the rules of engagement for this scenario, this starbase will not fire on the hero's ship until the hero's ship, uh, as long as there's any enemies, conscious, because you don't want to be shooting there when you have your friends there. You might hurt them. So they're moving up and getting in place to shoot. Now these guys are going to shoot back. So first, this guy, who is the scientist, is going to shoot, and he's got a skill of one. His target number is nine, so I need to roll an eight on the dice to hit. That's not an eight, and the enemies don't have luck, so that's just going to miss. This other guy is going to do the same thing. He's going to roll two dice and add three. That's definitely going to hit, and now he's going to roll two dice minus one for damage. No! This marine is armed with a disintegrator. The disintegrator only does one die of damage. Five. Ouch! Now, this hero always stops two points of damage because of his carapace. Here's the other special thing about the disintegrators. Now, this poor gentleman is going to get to make an athletics check of an eight or be turned into dust. So he rolls two dice and adds his athletics of one. That's an eight plus one is nine, so he's not turned into dust. Had it been lower, he would really probably spend some more luck to keep himself from getting turned into dust. All right, so that was him. and. Now this guy's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and he's gonna shoot him. Now, he's an engineer, so he doesn't get to reroll any of the dice on a combat check, and he only has a one skill, so that's just gonna miss. So now the enemies are done, and now that's the end of the phase, and we move on to the next phase, and it's ship movement. Finally, our ship is going speed one, so it goes one hex. Sorry, we were at the edge. One hex, and the Starbase isn't moving, so it stays there, and now it's time for hero actions. This guy's got some damage on him, and he's thinking, you know what, this might not be the best thing ever. So he's going to run back over and heal himself. One, two, three, four, five. And now he's going to use his med kit to heal himself. The med, kit, the med kit counter has on the one side all the rules for it, on the other side the pretty picture. So you can see he needs to make a science check of an 11 to heal one die of damage. So that's a 7. And his science skill is three, makes it a 10. He is a professional scientist, so he can reroll one of the dice in a science check. He will. And that is at least an 11. So he heals one die of damage, and his special power is that he's a doctor. He can reroll dice on the heal checks. That's one point. You know what? He doesn't want to heal one point, so he's going to use up. He's going to put a use marker there. He can use this six times and reroll that one to heal six. That, that heals. You can't go beyond your starting hit points. So he's feeling better now. Meanwhile, she wants to step out here. She really is itching to try that new jetpack, but frankly, there's a target there anyway, so she's just gonna shoot him. That is an eight, and his target number is an eight, so she hits easily. So uh, this will continue on like this until eventually the heroes should get off the edge of the map board. You're gonna, as soon as the heroes have, uh, that, that shot probably took him out, and as soon as the heroes have taken out all of the bad guys, the star base is going to start firing its cannon and launching its missiles at the heroes. So your job as the enemy right now is number one, to understand the game. Number two, to help the players understand how their starship works and how they can play the game. And three, provide a challenge so that uh, it's not too easy just to fly away. And fourth, try to win if you can. 
So that's the mission. After the mission is over, they, the heroes will all likely rank up and get a new level, which means they'll get another hit point and another point of luck, which also means that they'll get another special ability. So remember our guy who was a doctor, he might also now become resourceful or become a healer or a jack of all trades. So the characters will rank up and you'll be ready for the next mission.